All right. I am, well, good evening, good morning, um, good afternoon. Depends, I mean, I guess it depends on where, where you're located, where you are. Um, I just want to share something with you guys. Um, we have to recognize when we're being attacked by the enemy. And then, on top of that, we have to recognize that the enemy will use anybody to attack you, to steal your joy, to steal your happiness. I mean, that's what the enemy's job is to do. Kill, steal, and destroy. And trust me, he owns up to it. He does his best to do it if, if we allow him. Now, the thing about it is every morning when I wake up, I wake up thanking God for another day because tomorrow's not promised to any of us, you know? So I wake up really happy because I, I, I was able to see another day. And God allowed me to be able to, to, to experience another day on this earth. Um... When it comes to God, I'm really sensitive when it comes to him because of the way that he loves us so much, right? But I allowed, oh, sorry, I'm at work right now. <laughs> I actually allowed the, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself because I allowed the enemy I allowed the enemy to come in and try to steal my joy. And the crazy thing about it is that we don't even recognize that if you don't pay attention, if you don't pay attention, if you pay attention, great. But if you don't pay attention, the enemy will actually slither his way in and 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 do his best to try to steal your joy without you even recognizing that it's the enemy. The reason why sometimes that you wouldn't recognize that it's the enemy because you wouldn't think that your own family member would be the one to try to, you know, the, to allow the enemy to come in their thoughts to try to destroy you. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed in myself being, you know, human, not being perfect, allowing uh, for the enemy to get up under my skin. Um All I could say is uh, to you guys is just try your best because when you're happy and when you're spreading joy and you know you're walking around speaking to people saying good morning to them um, blessing their days and things of that nature praying for people staying prayed up you know um, that's the time that he wants to come in and he wants to try to steal that from you he doesn't want to see you happy he doesn't want to see you like uh, showing love to other people. He doesn't want to see you doing anything that's right. Now, if you decide to go out there and 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 do the wrong things, oh, he doesn't bother you because you're doing exactly what he wants you to do. But be aware, be aware, because we have to recognize when he's slithering his way in. We have to recognize when he's trying to come in and 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 steal your joy. And it doesn't matter who it is. He'll use the closest to you. He'll use your family members. He'll use anybody that you would think, okay, that would, would blind. It, it's like a blind, of a, like you're blinded because it's your family. Um, and you wouldn't think that oh, that would come from your family. But he'll use anybody. It doesn't matter if you're like how close you are with that person. He will use that person to turn against you. He will use that person to speak bad about you. He will use that person to do anything. And then you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. But don't be shocked. Turn around and pray. You know, pray. You got to rebuke Satan. We all have to rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. The thing about it is that people don't even realize that even him himself, his knee got to bow. His tongue has to confess. He ain't nobody. He's not nobody. 
His tongue has to confess who the true creator is. His knee has got to bow. His knee got to bend and get on the ground with everybody. We all have to confess who the great creator is. There's only one. There's only one true God. Now I pray to God for the gift of discerning to know when the enemy is under, is, is, is attacking. Um, and it, it will get you down if you let it, but don't let it, you know, the any, for some reason, like, it, it, cause you, you, you'll be so shocked, but you have to know who's in, who's really in control. God is really in control at the end of the day. He has the last say about everything. So just rejoice, be happy, praise him, worship him, glorify his holy name. Don't, don't stop worshiping him through no trials, no tribulations. It's going to come. It's going to come because you're following God. That's why it's going to come. You're going to be up under attack. That's how you know that you're doing the right thing. Anytime that you're doing the wrong thing, you don't be, you don't get attacked. But anytime you're doing something right and you're following the path of God and you surrender to God and you give your life to God, you're going to get attacked by the enemy. He doesn't want to see you walking with the Lord. He doesn't want to see you walk in the straight path. He wants to see you destroy yourself, kill yourself. That's what he wants to see. He wants you in the depression. He wants you giving up. But don't. Don't give up. Always look to God for everything. Go to him. Talk to him. That's what he wants from us. He wants a relationship with us. He wants us to talk to him. Just like we could call our friend up and tell our friend, hey, such and such, such and such. No, he wants us to call him. Call his name. And tell him such and such. Whatever's, whatever's bothering us on our minds, in our souls, in our spirits, in our hearts, whatever's on us, he said, come to him. He'll remove it. He'll take it away. I know I probably look a little bit different it's because I... I, I I, I got I, I got disappointed with myself because I allowed for someone to get up under my skin and I was not supposed to let that happen. Um, I wasn't supposed to allow that to happen at all. Um, as a person is coming at me, I should be praying for them. Not getting upset. No, there was no cussing, no... Um, foul language or anything like that it was just a, the 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 high level of the voice and I should have never let that happen and um, I'm just here to tell you that we're human beings you know but um, me I'm trying to do I'm, I'm doing my best to walk the right path with God only because that's the right way to be that's that's the right that's the only way it's the only way, you know, is to walk with God, walk with him, walk on, walk to, as he takes one footstep. I want to put my foot in that same footstep. When he takes the next one, I want to put my footstep in that, in that footstep. And I just want to follow God all the way and whatever that he'll have me do. I want his will to be in my life, my life to be in his, his will, you know, Whatever it is that he wants me to do, I need to be obedient and, and, and follow him and hear him and talk to him. But I, I, I talk to him every day. Just like I'm talking right now, I talk to him like wherever I am, um, whatever I'm doing, I, I invite him to come and do it with me. And it's just it, it's just so much fun when he's when his presence his presence I'm telling you I woke up at three o'clock this morning praying and I I told like I hadn't been doing it for a few days I want to say probably like maybe a week and a half or something like that right and um and he's been telling me like you haven't been you know you haven't been meeting me to come pray and I said I know father but I will and so on and so forth right but this morning 
he woke me up uh, to pray at three o'clock in the morning. I remember it was three eleven. I was watching, um, I was watching the Book of Daniel, and so I had dozed off. And um, I, I I looked at the time. It was three eleven. He had, that's when he had woke me up, and I was like, he was like, um, for me to go and meet him in prayer. And you know, at three o'clock in the morning, your body's like. Oh, well, Father, you know, <laughs> but in during the daytime, you're walking around and you're saying, I got to meet up. We got to meet up, Father. We have to, you know, we meet up at three o'clock in the morning. We got to spend time together and um, and so on and so forth. Right. And then when three o'clock come three o'clock in the morning comes, you're like, oh, Father, can we do this tomorrow? Like another day or whatever. But no, be obedient, you know, wake up, spend time with him, talk to him. Um, he, he, he wants us, he wants us. He, he needs our time. He loves our times. I, you know, when, when I go into prayer at three o'clock in the morning, uh, the first thing I tell him is I, you know, I, I, I wrap my hair, I put a robe on, I have a white robe and it's specific for prayer. And I have a, a hair wrap that I use that's specifically for prayer and it's purple and I have a white robe. And um, I bow down on my knees and I say, I'm here, Father. I'm here, you know, and then I wait for his presence. His presence. Oh. Let me tell you guys, when I am in the presence of the Lord, I start crying. I cry all the time when I'm in his presence because it's just so like, it's different. Like, it, like he makes you feel like he only loves you but he doesn't only love you he loves each and every one of us all of us you know but the thing about it is the way he makes it like when his presence comes like you don't want to come out of his presence you don't want to you don't want to come out of his presence you want to stay in his presence like you want to just stay there forever like it's so beautiful the way he feels the way he the way he just uh, just everything about the Lord is just so right like the love like you could feel the love like if you guys have never felt this love before I suggest that you go into prayer when you're by yourself alone and tell him that you are here and that you just wait for his presence it's gonna be it's it's going to be inside and all over, like all, like the whole, his whole everything. It's like, but the only thing about it is that he only gives you this much. He doesn't give you so, because we wouldn't be able to bear it. Like I could barely bear the little that he gives me. Like it's, it's, it's this love. Like you, you won't feel it from nobody. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't care. I have not met anybody. I, I, listen, I have beautiful kids and I love my kids dearly, but I can't even give them that type of love. They can't give me that type of love. This is a different love from God. And I'm telling you, like, you have to get in his presence. His presence alone is just, oh my gosh. Like, like when he comes, you know he's there because you don't feel no darkness. You feel everything light, everything. You you just feel the positive energy. Like, man, he's so, I, I cry. I cry in tears because I'm so grateful that his presence is there. Like, he's there. Like, he's there. Like, man, I tell you. I tell you, it, it's, it's so much that's going on in this world that we live in. It's just so much. It's so, there's so much evil going on and we all need to wake up. God said that my children will perish because of a lack of knowledge. God said to make knowledge and wisdom your sister and your kin, you know, ask him for the knowledge and the wisdom, ask him to bless you with the gift of discernment so that you can be aware of what's going on. I mean, oh my goodness, God is so amazing. I just want to let you guys know that he's so amazing. And I had to ask God to forgive me for allowing a family member to get up under my skin. I was just really shocked, um, but it happens. And we all have to just try to be aware. We're not perfect, 
or we're all going to make mistakes. Like I said, there was no cussing. It was just the elevation of the voices. And um, it, it just goes to show you the enemy doesn't care. And he'll use anybody. He'll use anybody. And it's just to try to make it where you'll stay mad at that person. But don't be. Ask for forgiveness. You know, um, pray for the person. You have to rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus. Bind him up. Cast him into the sea of the fire where he belongs. Um, you know, rebuke him from your family. You know, um, because we're definitely in a spiritual warfare. We are in a, ooh, when I say it, it, it's a battle, it, trust me, it truly is a battle. It is a battle. Um, but I just say to everybody, just, we all have to stay prayed up and we all need to, to focus on the one true God. There's only one. If you have idols, get rid of them. I, I was burning sage and I learned that, you know what, that's not a part of God. You know, God loves incense and things of that nature, but I got rid of that, you know, because when you have a problem, you, all you have to do is just go to God. You know, go to him, talk to him about it, and then he'll eliminate the problem from you. You know, he'll soothe everything out. And then on top of that, he'll make you feel better on the inside. And when you're feeling good on the inside, it all shows on the outside. So just go to God, just whatever it is that you're going through, no matter what, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's a struggle, just go to God, open up that relationship with God. He will, he will show the, he, he will show you the way he will, he will make things so smooth. You know, what is the word that Jesus Christ said? Take my yoke, my, my burden is light. I mean, that right there alone. You know, that those words right there, it's my burden is light. You know, <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I, I just know that all of us need God. We all just need him uh, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. I mean, he died on the cross for our sins, you know, so we could get another chance. God was about to destroy everything. He already did. He flooded the earth. God wasn't satisfied with a lot of things. Oh, let me tell you guys. So let me tell you, okay, because I decided <clears throat> to read my Bible every day, right, from the beginning of, uh, of the Bible. I just decided that every day I'll read at least two chapters, you know. Um, starting from the big, the chapter one in Genesis and everything. So I'm reading the Bible, reading the Bible, reading the Bible, right? And as I get over to Sodom and Gomorrah, right? As a matter of fact, I keep my Bible with me. So I was reading and, and, um, look guys, God, man, he, when I, when I say that God loves us, I, man, God loves us, okay? So, he appeared to Abraham. Abraham was on a hill. And he could, God appeared to Abraham. And Abraham, uh, God told Abraham to look down at the cities. Then there was Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And um, God let him know that he was going to destroy the cities. So Abraham was like, if you could find 50 righteous people, would you spare the city? God said, if I can find 50, I will spare the cities. I, like, You know, he wouldn't destroy them and everybody that's in it. He wouldn't destroy. It. So Abraham went down to, you know, OK, well, if you find 45, would you spare the city and he said yeah god said yes he would spare everybody's life if he could find 45 and then the numbers start trickling down you know uh, 30 and then you know we went down and then we get down to 10 abraham asked him lord if you can if you find 10 will you spare the cities and God said, yes, if he found 10, 
Tin. That right there, that right there alone. And we don't think that God loves us. We don't think he loves us. Hmm. We better think again. We better think again. God is in love with us. <sighs> okay, let me see here. So it's chapter 18. I'm going to read on from um, uh, verse 26. The Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for for their sake. Then Abraham spoke spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him. What if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. He answered. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. I love the way Abraham was so respectful to the Lord, to God. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. Do you see what I'm talking about? I bet you if Abraham would have asked him for the sake of five, two, would you, and God would not have destroyed the city. But the thing about it is that there was no righteous. The only person that was there, I do believe it was Lot. And God went down there. And he said that, that they were going to go. He said that he was going to go sleep in. Um, I think God sent the angels. I do believe it was the angels. And um, they were going to go sleep in the, um, the court. And Lot told them no because he knew what the men that were there uh, would do. And um, they were like, no, it's okay. We're going to go ahead and sleep at the court. And they were, like, I think it's a place outside or whatever. And then um, he was like, no, please let me cook for you guys. Let me make you guys a dinner or whatever. Lot was like, come to my place. You, I, I will make sure that you're comfortable. You know, you know. Um, I'm using my words sort of kind of. But they explained to him that what they were going to do. So they they were telling god was telling them to like get all you know your daughters your your sons and stuff like that right so lot went to tell his sons you know and they didn't believe they didn't believe so he got his daughters and his wife and um it was that was it you know <sighs> I, I I just we gotta open up our eyes. God spares us, and He doesn't have to. He spares our lives, and He 
I don't know how many times I have to say that he gives us chance after chance. And I think in all of my videos, I always say that God gives us chance after chance after chance. And it's true. But we take advantage of his kindness. We take advantage of him. All he wants is for us to worship, praise, and glorify him. But truly from our hearts, from the from within us, within our within us, inside, giving us like giving him all of us. Like the whole, everything about us, just giving it all to him. But we don't even do that. We're so worried about material stuff that we can't even take with us. You know, when God, meant, when, when God mentioned the mansions in the new earth and, and the, how he has many mansions, I keep on looking forward to that. And I keep on thinking of, like, oh, Father, you know what? I have to write down how I want to my my mansion to be designed how i want what i want inside of my mansion and um things that need like i want to i want to dwell with him like you know how you wake up in the morning and you just see him right there like i mean i see him every day because first of all when he wakes me up second of all when he sends the birds flying in the sky third of all when i look at the trees every day all of this creation is what he did. His hand touched it and made it. So I see him already. I see him sitting on a throne, just looking down on all of us. You know what I mean? And the the, the thing about it is just, just think of it like this. Like, you know, when God clears out the earth and he makes the new earth and um, the mini mansions and stuff like that, right? And you're just waking up in the morning and you just go to him and be like, hey, father, what's up? What you want me to do today? You know what I mean? Just just to be that right there. I mean, that I don't understand how people don't want to just just be in that like just oh my goodness. That right that right there alone. Oh. I don't know, man. I just all I could do, I, all we could do, is just pray for everybody, pray for each and every one. We're all brothers and sisters. It doesn't even matter what color we are. We all came from God, you know. We're all brothers and sisters. We all just choose to like walk different paths, and sometimes they're they're not always the right path, you know. So we just got to get on the right path with God. You know, he already has our destiny already set for us, you know. And it's just about getting through this test. We got to, we all get tested every day. And it's about passing the test. We got to pass the test. You know, God sent his son, his only son to die on the cross for our sins. We have to die to live. You know, we have to die to live. And why not? Why not do it for him? We have to stand bold for God. Like stand proud and stand bold for him. He does it for us all the time. There was one time, one day I was looking and I asked God, I said, Father, let me see things like the way you see things in your eyes. And let me hear things the way you hear things, you know. And, um. And allow me to speak when you'll have me speak, right? So one day I was in my work truck like I am now. You know, I spend a lot of time in my work truck and I, I uh, talk to God in my work truck, in my car. You know, this is like mainly private, real private places for me. And um, I parked my vehicle and I just so happened to be looking across the street. And there was two men that were working and they were doing their own little thing, you know, but they were, you know, talking, conversing uh, with one another. And I'm looking at them. And this is the day that God allowed me to see things the way he sees it, right? Do you know that God sees us as so precious? Like, oh my goodness, these guys don't even realize how God, like a lot of us don't realize how God looks at us, right? When God is seeing us, it's like he goes like this to grab us and, and, and go like, it's 
that's how he looks at us. Like, he looks at us like we're so precious. Like, I'm telling you, that's the way I was looking at those two men. Like, they're so precious in God's eyes. I asked God, God to let me see how he sees things, right? And the way he looked, it was like, you know how you get a teddy bear? Like, I thought I had a teddy bear in my work truck. I have one in my car. But anyways, like, you grab a teddy bear and you go like, oh, like this. Or you get a little puppy and you go, oh, like this. This is how God looks at us. Like, he looks at us like, oh, my babies, I love you guys. So, like, that's how he looks at us. And he allowed me to see. And it was like, it was a glaze. Like, it wasn't like, okay, let's say somebody's right in front of me and I could just see them clearly, right? It was just like, it was a glaze. Like, I could see these two people working. And, and they don't even know how precious they are to God. And he doesn't look at color. He doesn't. He doesn't look at color, how tall you are, how small, big. He doesn't look. He just loves us. Like he loves us unconditionally. Unconditionally loves us. Oh, we got to get it together. Everybody, you know what? I'm going to ask everybody if you could just pray to God and ask him for his presence. Ask him. To be in his presence, you're not going to want to come out of it because the way that you, the way you're going to feel, you're, this is a feeling that you don't get from anybody, okay? I don't care how many, they could tell you they love you every day. This feeling is totally different, totally different. And I'm just asking each and every one to go into prayer and open up a relationship with God. And ask God to come into your life, okay? Ask him to come into your life. Repent of your sins. And that means whatever thoughts that were negative, whatever is, is that you did that wasn't pleasing to the, the, the eyes of the Lord. Ask for forgiveness and ask him if you if he will allow like to come in, you know, to bring his presence and to surround you with his love and just him recognize him look around you and see everything that he created everything that he created and acknowledge him for it you know let him know that his hand is beautiful because it is if everything has life to it and god touched it his hand is beautiful look at how he created you and me God created you and me. We get cut. We start healing. <laughs> that came from God. Okay. So I just ask you guys. Just like ask God for forgiveness of your sins. And we got to just. We got to do it right. Okay. We got to do it right. We got to give God everything. Give him everything. Know who God is. Okay. Okay. And don't, don't, don't just, he's real, okay? Know him so that he won't deny you. You don't want it to be that day at the end that he denies you. I want him to say, well done, my faithful servant. Because that's who we are. We're all servants of God. We're all a part of God's body. We're all a part of him. And all we have to do is come together and worship and praise him and glorify his holy name. And I'm telling you, you guys, just, just do it. It's the right thing. Why wouldn't you want to do the right thing? God is the right thing. God is the light. He's the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the first, the last. He's the life and the light. He's everything there's none like him and when i say that i truly mean that from the bottom of my heart there is none like him get a relationship with god okay get a relationship with him give him everything i know it probably it may be i don't know it might feel a little bit different in the beginning but just go to him and say hey father i'm right here i am right here I'm ready to talk. Are you ready to listen? I got things I got to say. And then watch how he reveals himself to you. 
he's going to reveal himself to you, okay? Trust me. He, you're not just talking for nothing. Pay attention. He'll reveal himself to you. I love you guys. Bless all of you guys. Look to the... Look to the Lord. He loves each and every one of us unconditionally. All of us. All of us. Okay? Ask him for forgiveness of the sins. And just keep walking in his path. Keep walking toward him. Go toward him. Go. That's the right way. Stay on the path with the Lord. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Take care.